I'm Mike Kelly from Project Healing Waters Omaha, and tonight uh, we're going to tie um, three flies that use um, natural fur uh, for the dubbing, and uh, we'll go everywhere from the 1600s to, uh, I think, the 1960s, I think, is where the other two flies were uh, basically started. Um, the first one we're going to start with is the Iron Blue Dunn. Um, it was actually, uh, it's a, it's a North Country style um, wet fly from the 1600s in England. So it's kind of hard to actually identify um, who the original tire was. Uh, but I did find Pat Russell as a name that it's attributed to. Um, it's been featured in uh, several books. James uh, Leeson Ring's book, The Art of Finding the Wet Fly. Uh, Sylvester Nemesis' book, uh, The Soft Tackle Fly, and many other books and magazines. It was originally designed to um, imitate a specific mayfly that's found in the UK but it can be used as a general nymph pattern. Um, I think the addition of the red contrasting color makes it attractive to fish. And it can be tied on um, a wet fly hook, a nymph hook. Um, in this case, I've tied it on a scud hook. And I just think that looks nice with the, with the bent body like that. Um, I'm going to switch over to the materials. So um, for this particular fly, um, it's basically just um, what I'll use for it is mole fur, which is uh, what it was originally tied with. Um, if you look at the mole fur, it's, of course, very short. Um, very short fibers. There's not many guard hairs. It's uh, makes really good dubbing because it's it's just very short and soft and fine. This is mink. Uh, we'll be using that for uh, one of the later flies if there's time. Um, and then muskrat is a little bit longer than the mink. Um, beaver, I think that fits in there uh, even longer than the muskrat. Um, but it, that can also be used. It's a soft, um, soft fur that can easily be used for, uh, for dubbing. So again, we'll just, uh, work with the mole and then for the thread, I'm going to use a, pretty heavy thread. Um, this is a Danville's flat wax nylon. It's actually 210 denier. Um, I'm tying this on a size 10 hook. If you were tying this smaller, you'd have to go um, with a smaller diameter thread, just uh, proportional to the hook. So this is just a um, scud hook. I think it's from Jay Stockard. Again, in a size 10. And also, before I get started, I'm going to use a um, go back to the original fly. So it's got a um, the thread is normally either crimson, cardinal, or claret. Silk is what the original pattern called for, but again, that's from the 1600s. Um, the tail is a few fibers of a soft, um, light colored, uh, they call for white, um, but I'll just use a real light gray. And then uh, body again is mole fur, but um, 
this has a uh, pronounced butt of of this dark of this red colored uh, thread um, at at the back, and then just a few turns. Uh, the original pattern was jackdaw or starling, and in, again in a smaller size, you could use starling if you have it. Um, I'm using a little bit bigger of a soft hackle is what I'm going to use. So I will place the hook if I can. There it is. And I will put on my glasses. Now I'm just going to start the thread actually at the eye of the hook this time. Take a couple wraps back to about the middle. And then I'll cut off that waist. And then I'm going to take that soft tackle feather. And I'm going to strip off this fuzzy stuff at the base. And I'm going to tie this down with the concave side facing up. And I'm going to leave a little bit of, um, of stem there at the eye. I'm going to leave that right on top of the hook shank wrap back to the eye. And then I'm just going to flatten my thread out because I don't want too much bulk. So spinning it counterclockwise as if I'm looking down on it. Flattened out that thread. So I can go back to the back. And then I'm going to cut that stem. Now what I'm doing here essentially is building a little bit of a taper in the body. So now again, I'm going to spin my thread counterclockwise, come back forward. And this is going to be a little unorthodox, but I'm going to actually tie this fly in a little bit of a reverse fashion. So with this mole fur, um, again, you can see it's very short. I'm just going to clip out a little section here. There it is. So I got a little bunch of the mole fur here. And I'm just going to kind of mix that around a little bit. So the fibers aren't real well aligned. But I just got this little ball of fluff right there. I'm going to take my tying thread and put a little bit of wax on it. Just to give it a little bit of grip. And I'm only going about maybe two inches here. And then I'm going to touch that mole fur to the thread. And see how that sticks to the to the wax. So now I'll set that remainder down. Give a little bit of a spin. So now I'll pick that clump back up and I'll just take little amounts and just fill in. I have just like a few hairs. I'll just take any spaces where I can see the thread and just kind of fill those in. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. So now, I'm going to 
take that dubbing from the front, wrap it towards the back. Say I want a little bit more dubbing. I'm gonna leave that much exposed and I'm just gonna come back. Again, you can see I have just a few fibers there. I'm just gonna bulk that back up a little bit. That's too much. Okay, that's just about right. Now, I'm gonna take, this is a, actually a red-orange fluorescent is the color of this um, when I bought it. And I'm gonna work down into the bend a little bit to give it that, um, that butt. And I'm gonna come back over it, back to the end of the dubbing. Now, at this point, I'm going to cord my thread up, so I'm going to spin it clockwise as if I'm looking down on it. And then I'm going to come forward and rib that dubbing with that orange thread, red-orange thread. Come up to the soft hackle. Then I will Grab my feather. And do a few wraps. Oh, that's beautiful. Whoops. Good thing I had a hold of it. My hackle pliers let go. And then I'll take one turn over that. Since I'm using such a heavy thread, I don't want to make too much bulk. So I took one turn. I'll take my hackle pliers off and sweep all this back. Take a couple more turns here at the head. And then whip finish. Pull that nice and tight. And then I'll cut that thread free. And then Find the tip and pull that forward and just break it off. Now I'll sweep those back so I don't get a, too much glue on them here. And again, I'm gonna take, I actually didn't add the tail feathers on there for this one. I'm gonna take a little bit of glue and squeeze it onto this three by five card. My glue's getting kind of thick. I need to replace that stuff. And then I'll take my bodkin and just grab a little bit of glue there. glue that head and also put a little bit on that tail so that if that does get raked by some teeth it doesn't come unwound and then just to make sure my eye is clear stick an old hackle tip through there and that's good to go. That's the iron blue done. With the contrast, 
um, of colors. Um, I just love the looks of that fly. And with these uh, North Country spiders, um, wet flies like this, um, you can fish them as a dropper off a, off a big dry fly. Um, you know, everybody talks about swinging, uh, swinging wet flies or swinging soft hackles. So you could uh, cast them across and a little bit down and let them, uh, let them just swing through the current. Um, I have actually, not this particular one, but I fish soft tackles like this, um, actually casting upstream, which is a lot of times how I like to fish in small streams. Uh, they're all facing upstream, so they can't see you when you um, sneak up on them as much. So that's that it's one here's nice. the mulfer. Um, with the mulfer, uh, I clipped off a section because that gave me actually, I don't even see that I have any, yeah, there's a little bit left um, here. But uh, what you can also do if you just need a little bit is just pluck it like this. And that's how I normally do it for, um, it ends up being mixed like that and uh, just a just a small enough amount to, to pinch onto the thread. So that's another way to do that mold fur. Can't so much do it with the other furs because of their guard hairs and everything, but um, it's just very, very soft and it really makes an easy dubbing. So the next fly, I think we're gonna do the muskrat nymph. Um, this has a little bit too much in the leg category there. That's a little too bulky. Um, but this and the next fly, if there's time, which I think there will be. Hello, Jesse Wynn. I just saw you pop in. I didn't even spotlight myself for that. Oh, I've gone it. So hopefully that was showing up big for you guys when I was talking. Yeah, it's it's right size. Okay. Hey, Mike, did so you tied that as number ten? Yes. Is that is that a, a pretty common size for um, that fly? For for soft tackles, um, I mean, I always say there's there's not a fly that a bluegill won't eat. Um, <laughs> right. I, I do I do tie a lot of size ten um, soft tackles and nymphs and stuff like that. And normally I do that for um, the camera, but right. um, normally uh, soft tackles, I think the original, um, you know, the way it was done in England is 14 through uh, 22. Yeah, that sounds better. Um, so a lot smaller. Um, and traditionally, again, it was a wet fly hook, um, similar to what this fly is tied on. Um, Hans Weilenman. I'll hold up my sheet we sent out with the uh, email. But you can see that one's done on a curved nymph hook. So it's a real long, he uses, he has a real long, um, let me put my iron blue done back in there. Um, his has a lot more exaggerated of a tail. And then he uses partridge for the, he used partridge for the hackle. And then again, you could put a few, just a couple little fibers of, uh, of like a white soft hackle or a light gray um, coming out for the tail. My printer put a line across there if that confuses you, but um, that's the iron blue done. One of my favorites to look at and to tie. And the next one, probably one of the first flies I, um, first nymphs that I um, learned how to tie is the muskrat nymph. And you can do it with or without the legs. Um, without the legs, it would just be um, 
very very similar to a caddis um, pupa with a lighter colored body and then a dark um, uh, the area where the legs and the head are is normally darker. Um, but it's muskrat fur for the body. Um, any soft tackle, speckled soft tackle for the legs, and then uh, peacock curl for the for the head. So mount a wet fly hook. That's just a standard wet fly hook. Let me center that a little better. Maybe toward the top a little bit. Sorry about that. And then back to materials for the, I don't even have peacock curl. There it is. So peacock curl for the head. Um, for this one, I'm actually going to use muskrat. Um, I have some new stuff that I bought because I had a pretty short, pretty small patch here. But um, this has actually lasted me so many years, you would, wouldn't believe it. So you really don't need a lot of this stuff. It goes a long way. Um, but that will be the um, head and then the body. And then... Um, this soft tackle that I'm using is a nice brown gray. Um, this is Coq de Leon um, hen hackle. And I ended up getting this from Hook and Hackle when they were going out of business. Um, I'm not sure what a neck like this would uh, would cost if you bought it from a, another dealer. But again, I actually pre-selected one of these speckly um, feathers here from the side uh, to use as the legs. So I'll move all that over here. We'll switch cameras again. So for the muskrat now, I'm going to go with maybe a little bit smaller thread and I'll go back to black. This I'm actually using this Semperfly um, 12 watt. This stuff is stronger probably than that thick 200, 210 denier stuff that I was using earlier. It's probably stronger than that. I think, uh, was it last week I bent a hook with it? Um, but it's real, real thin. So it doesn't add any bulk at all. The only thing is it's real slippery. So you can see I had trouble starting it on the hook. Um, you have to actually take a few wraps forward before you come back across it. Otherwise, it'll just start slipping. And it's difficult to cut. There we go. I'm just gonna lay down a thread base back to the end of the shank which is when you let your thread hang down, it's right there at the barb. And then I'm gonna come back forward to about the hook point because I'm gonna spin some dubbing on there. And I won't be able to get the dubbing right up to the hook shank. So that gives me a little room to wind back toward the bend of the, of the hook there before my dubbing starts. So here's my I little patch. I do enjoy seeing you struggle. Pardon me? What's that? I said I do enjoy seeing you have a hard time even. Yeah. I said I do enjoy seeing yep. you struggle a little bit. Yep. Um, so I'm going to take this piece of muskrat. I'm going to tease out a little lump like this. Kind of hard to do it on the camera there and then cut it free. So right now I've got um, this fur and you can see all these guard hairs out here. 
For the muskrat nymph, I don't really want a lot of those guard hairs, so I'm just going to reach and grab those, and you can pull those away. So I've got most of those out of there. Now there's some smaller guard hairs that are mixed in there, um, but those won't cause too much of a problem. So I've got these, um, this under fur, and it's all just kind of lined up. I'm going to take it and just kind of pull at it and just mix it up and get it to where it's just kind of a jumbled mess of fuzz here. And that way I'll be able to just pull little bits off to make my dubbing. I have actually enough for about three flies here, but so I'm just going to reach up here and just grab a few. I always say three hairs and some air. I can do this with dubbing or with uh, dubbing wax, um, but I'm going to do this one without. Let's grab a few more hairs and twist them on. Let me zoom out a little bit here. So you can see what I'm doing better. Grab a few hairs. Push them on and do that in the same direction. You don't ever want to go back and forth or you're going to um, loosen your, called a dubbing noodle. So I'm adding a little bit more to the top there. I see kind of a thin area right in here. And you can slide that on the slicker thread like this. You can slide it up a little ways. And that's enough to go a little ways. So I'm going to use that um, room at the at the top there to get back to the bend of the hook. And then I'll start wrap, wrapping my dubbing forward. And I'm going to run a little bit short. So I'll just grab my... Dubbing again. Just a few hairs at a time. Twist it on. And wrap it forward. Now, I'm a couple of eye lengths back from the eye. And that's where I want to stop. I'm going to take this um, soft hackle um, feather and the length of these fibers doesn't really matter. So uh, if you have a lot of uh, larger, um, nice speckled hackles, um, you can use bigger ones. Um, but I'm going to separate the tip like that, folding these guys back separate the tip and then trying to use scissors in my left hand. I'm going to clip that out. So now I've got that V right there, like a chevron. I'm just going to get rid of all the rest of this stuff. And that's going to be my legs. Now, again, I usually tend to kind of overdress these legs. So I'm going to pick a few more of those off of there. So now I'm going to set this back a ways um, over the back and take a wrap over and then a wrap under and another wrap over. And I'm not going very tight. And then I'm going to take that stem and start pulling where I get the legs in the right length that I want them to be. 
So I want them to be to where they just about touch the hook point, but I'm gonna actually end up folding these down. So now that I have them about the length that I want, I'm gonna take a few tight wraps back toward the eye and clip the stem out. Now I'll take those legs and pull them down and then make a few wraps right here that go a little bit over those. So that causes them to lean back. Let me take another wrap or two. So there's my legs. Now I'll take a peacock curl. And the tips on these are usually pretty brittle. brittle. So I just try to break them off like that or you can clip off about an inch. And I'll tie that in by the tip. Try to get it to where the, where I clear the eye. I don't have anything protruding over the eye. And then I'll tie that down nice and tight and come back to the eye. Now I'll take that peacock curl. I had a better idea. I'm going to come back actually to the peacock curl and I'm going to wrap in front of the thread to make my peacock curl head. And then I'm going to come through that peacock curl without with this thin thread. It's not really pushing those down, but it's reinforcing it. And then I can stroke all that back, make a small head, and whip finish. Pull that tight, flip the thread, and then you can snap that hurl off. There's the muskrat nymph. Zoom in on it. There we go. Very nice. And then the most popular Holly Rossboro fly is the casual dress. Oops. Um, Polly Rossboro was uh, um, Oregon fly tire. Um, he was actually born in Arkansas, but he... Uh, got his name from co-workers at a box factory in Northern California where he worked because he talked so much they called him Polly the Parrot. Um, his name was actually Ernest Rossboro. Um, in 1965 he self-published his first book Tying and Fishing the Fuzzy Nymphs and he was known for uh, the uh, real buggy nymph patterns that gave movement to uh, to the realistic nymph profiles. Um, he was also uh, pretty well known for his contributions to the salmon and steelhead flies. For this one, we'll use a little bit longer of a hook. Um, it's a little bit longer nymph hook. And I will use some of this fantastic mink 
that I got from Will the other day at the fishing tournament. And I'm going to clip out a small section. And this time, I'm going to take these guard hairs, just like I did before, pinch those out of there. But I'm going to save that clump and set it down. And I'll use that later. So I'm going to take those guard hairs. Whoops, I need thread first. And all right, now I'm going to take my card ears and tie in a tail. I want that to be about a hook gap in length. And that's tied back to the end. Now, I'm going to take a little bit more of that stuff out of there. This is some of the kind of medium length guard hairs and a little bit of fuzz. And I just want to kind of fuzz that tail up a little bit. I don't want to tie like a whole big clump of under fur and everything there. But I do want to bulk that tail up a little bit. And then I'll come back to the eye of the, or to the point of the hook. Then again, this, that's my muskrat. This is my mink. I'm going to take this and leave a few of those medium, so you can see some of those medium length guard hairs. I'm going to leave some of those in there. Just kind of mix this stuff up again. And then just pulling off a few at a time, just like before, twisting in the same direction. I'm going to make this a little bit thicker. But to make it thicker, I'm just doing more small bunches on top of each other, not big bunches of fur. If you do big bunches of fur, you'll get very frustrated with your dubbing. Once you start to get control of using a small amount at a time, it gets a lot easier. So that's pretty good healthy dubbing noodle right there. I'll just Slide it up there a little bit. I do want some room to get back to the end of the hook. And I'll start there. And just start wrapping forward. I need a little bit more. I want to leave room for a collar and um, a head similar to what we used on the muskrat. So I'm going to do about another inch. See where that takes me. I think that'll be good. So now I'm going to adjust things a little bit here. I'm going to 
do a dubbing loop. So I'm going to take just maybe an inch and a half, two inches, and make a loop. And I'm going to take a couple wraps, and then I'm going to come around the back of it and close that together. So you can see at the top, it's You can see right up here at the at the top, it's close together. And then I'll come forward a little bit just to get out of the way. I have that in my fingers. I'm gonna hang a dubbing tool on there just to keep that separated like that, so that keeps it open for me. Let that hang. Now I'm gonna take a little bit more of this mink, just a little bit. Now I've got um, all those really long guard hairs. I'm gonna take some of those out. So I want this fur, this under fur and some of the guard hairs to be in my little bunch here. And I'm gonna make sure that's not twisted at the top. And I'm gonna stick that inside. Do that again, got it twisted. Okay. I'm gonna stick that between those two threads. Like so. And let those come together. So now I've got my clump sandwiched in between those two threads. So I want to take that fur and just start sliding it around a little bit here. So I have the tips sticking out enough to make a collar. And I want to spread that out a little bit here. So that's going to make a pretty good collar right there. So I'm going to turn this and come in here with my scissors and just get rid of any of that excessive long stuff there. And then I'm going to take my zoom out again, take my dubbing tool and just twist it. So you can see that, let me, here it is. Starting to spin up. I'm just gonna take my bodkin and just kind of rub on it a little bit just to keep spinning it. And then what I've made is kind of a real long chenille of that fur. So now instead of trying to mess with that um, dubbing tool, that's gonna be kind of long. I'm gonna come right up at the base of this fur and I'm gonna wrap a couple of times around a um, plunger style hackle pliers or electronic test clip or whatever you wanna call this. And then I can cut that. So now I have a little bit shorter of a thing to deal with here. And I'm going to 
get to where that's right at the dubbing and then I'm just gonna stroke that back like I'm doing a soft hackle and just make touching turns with that collar. Just stroke all that back. Now I've gotten to the end of it. I'm gonna tie that down. Come back over that. And then I can get rid of this twisted thread from my dubbing loop. So there's my collar. It's got a few guard hairs and then all that under fur. Then just like peacock hurl, I'll grab, this is ostrich hurl. I'll grab a hurl out of there. And I'll tie that so the, I don't know if you can see that the, that there's a, a stem side right here where the stem, stem sticks out. And then this side is more flat. I'll try to get that stem forward. Tie that down good. And then just like with the uh, peacock hurl, wrap a ostrich hurl head here. A couple of wraps and then fold it back. Put in the whip finish. And then since that's bent backwards like that, you should be able to snap it forward and break that stem off. And that's the casual dress. Any questions? Any questions on tying with fur? Looks good. Again, uh, doesn't really stand out as looking like any of the um, you know nymphs that we're familiar with, um, but it definitely. I I actually fish this as a bait fish a lot. I've fished this a lot for crappie. Hmm. Um, it especially you know this is size ten, uh, size eight. Um, tie a bigger one. You can use beaver is a little bit bigger. Um, muskrat is what it was originally tied with. Um, but if you imagine this, um, you know, all being wet, um, all, that collar, especially if you make that collar a little more bushy, um, that'll just make the profile of a small bait fish. Um, mm. But again, a lot of your larva, um, and nymphs have a dark head and a lighter body um, where the, the, the head and the tail and the legs come out is usually a darker um, front. So there you go.